Good afternoon, Hazel, and welcome to Wednesday afternoon stroke evenings recording of Rooftops. Hope you're all doing well. Now, we left Sophie, I'm not going to say Charles this time, because the last chapter was mainly about Sophie, wasn't it, when she'd gone to bed and she couldn't get to sleep with all these things running through her mind. And I mean, I think I'm a little bit guilty of that. If, if you're sort of worried or uptight about something, you kind of stress about something that isn't really important. And in Sophie's case, it was to do with the skylight window that will not open, isn't it, in the room that she's staying in. And she'd run downstairs, hadn't she, and got gotten olive oil. That didn't work. She poured it on the hinges, used tissue paper that disintegrated. Then she got a cloth. That didn't work. She even got one of her stockings, didn't she, and tried that. And she was feeling very, very frustrated. And then one last attempt, and she heaved with all her might, didn't she? And it, it came open. And she ended up out on the rooftop. And it was that question of, she thought, did she see something on the other rooftops out of the corner of her eye, or had she imagined it? And I suggested that maybe she had seen the children that we haven't met or know anything about yet that actually live on the rooftops of these buildings in Paris. So let's find out. Chapter 12. Sophie did not sleep for long. She was only halfway through a dream when there was a clattering crash and a thump and Sophie jerked awake. She was lying face down and her scream was muffled by her pillow. Even so, a voice spoke very clearly in the darkness. Don't wail like that, you'll wake the whole hotel. Her dressing table was on the floor next to a broken mug. Mud and soot were scattered across the carpet and there was a boy standing at the foot of her bed. The boy said, stop it, arrête, stop crying, stop, Sophie. Sophie had not been crying in her own opinion. She had been choking, which seemed reasonable in the circumstances. She pushed the hair out of her eyes. Who are you? She grabbed a book and held it over her heart. It might help if you tried to stab her. I'll scream. No, don't scream. Why shouldn't I? It was too dark to see him properly. I'm just about to. He wasn't much older than she was, Sophie thought. He was long-legged and his face was tight and wary just like an animal. He didn't look like a murderer. Her breath came a little more easily. Because I don't like screaming. What do you want? I want to talk to you, Sophie. How does he know her name? Oh, how do you know my name? And what are you doing here? I heard the man saying in the street, the long one, the one you called Charles. My name is Matteo, he added as an afterthought. You were watching us? The boy picked his nose. Yes, you're not special. I watch everybody. And what if I scream for the police? What happens then? The boy shrugged. You won't. But if you do, I can be gone in... He glanced, calmly measuring at the skylight. Six seconds. Not if I stop you. He shrugged again. Well, you could try. And what are you doing here? Sophie sat up. She thought, hold steady. It was lucky that her room was so small. If he tried to attack her, she could get out through the door in three steps. I came in from the roof. Yes, well, I can see that. The window was open wider than she had left it, and he had brought at least two dozen pigeons worth of droppings in with him. But why? Why didn't you come through the door? Don't you lock it? That's dangerous. You should lock your door. Yes, I do, actually, so that people can't come in. The boy just shrugged again. It was difficult to see in the dark, but he might have been laughing at her, and it was not a friendly laugh. Sophie said, And how did you get onto the roof in the first place? I thought the only way onto the roof was my skylight. You thought there was only one way onto the rooftop. Vraiment? You really thought that? Why are you laughing? There's hundreds of ways onto any rooftop. I could have climbed the drain pipe. 
Did you? I would have heard you, wouldn't I? Probably. Then how did you? I jumped from the roof next door. You jumped? Sophie tried to look casual. Um, isn't that dangerous? Her casual face felt stiff. No, well, I don't know, maybe. Most things are dangerous. Your eye is twitching. Is it? Sophie abandoned her casual face. Oh, we. Oui. Anyway, he looked at her and his eyes were black and hard. I came to tell you to keep off my rooftop. Sophie was speechless. She had half expected him to ask for money or to try to seal her cello. She was so startled that she actually forgot to be frightened. She said, It's not your rooftop. How can it be? All the rooftops between the river and the train station are mine. I did not give you permission to go up there. But rooftops don't belong to anybody. They're like air and water. They're no man's land. They're not. They're mine. How? How are they yours? They just are, and I know them best. Sophie's face must have looked as unconvinced as she felt, because the boy scowled. I do, he said. I know exactly which chimney pots are going to fall next autumn, and which gutter mushrooms you can eat. I bet you didn't even know that you can eat those mushrooms that grow in the gutters. Sophie had, had not known that there were such mushrooms, so she kept quiet and said nothing. I would have done that too. And, said the boy, I know every single bird's nest my side of the city. Well, that doesn't make the rooftops yours. They belong to me more than anybody else. I live on them. No, you don't. You can't. Nobody lives on houses. You live in them. You don't know what you're talking about. The boy glared at her. He thumped the wall and his hand left a sooty mark. The forefinger on his right hand was missing its tip. Ooh. Look, this is stupid. I don't want to hurt you. But you have to stay off the roofs or I will... Will what? I will hurt you, he said. As matter of fact as a man selling bread. But why? What are you talking about? You won't be careful enough. You'll give me away. You have the streets. Use them. Outside, the clouds moved away from the moonlight and the room filled briefly with night glow. The boy's face was darkly tanned, or maybe dirt, she thought, and seemed to be made up of sharp angles and eyes. I can't stay off the roofs, said Sophie. I need them. Why? I, said Sophie. Well... It's too hard to explain. They feel safe somehow. And Sophie blushed as she said it. The boy snorted. I mean, they feel important. The boy said, So, eh, alors? I feel like I've been here before, she said. I think they might be a clue. She expected that he would relent. It's what you did. You gave in. Giving in was good manners. But the boy only stared at her, unsmiling. No, rooftops are not a clue, they're mine. You'd give me away, you'd be slow. If you're slow, people see you. I'm not slow. He looked at her hands, her feet. You'd bleed too easily, you look soft. I am not soft. Look, no, don't go, look. Sophie held out her left hand, palm up. The fingertips were callous from her cello strings. Do they look soft to you? Yes, they do. Sophie could have screamed. The boy said, and you'd be noisy. How do you know? You don't know me. It seemed too much for this boy to break into her room in the moonlight and start insulting her volume control. All pavement people are noisy. You'd give me away or you'd fall. And people would come searching around and find us all. I mean, find me. No, you're not coming up here again. You can't stop me. The boy sighed. He spoke like someone holding on to his temper by a thread. Fine. Just stay on your own rooftop then. Don't go near the edge. Stay low. Don't stay out after sunrise or people will see you. 
don't make a noise or I'll hear you and I'll come and burn off all your hair while you're sleeping. Wow. But I can't, said Sophie. Really, really, I can't. I need to look around. I need to find out more. Couldn't, she hesitated. Could I come with you? The look he gave her was as cold as ice. It burned. Fine, if you can catch me. The boy had not been lying when he said he could be gone in six seconds. He gripped hold of the window frame and had twisted himself up and out before Sophie had counted to five. He seemed made of springs and leather. Sophie followed with only a little scrabbling, a little blood. Her legs were long and she was quick, but the boy, as she clambered onto the slate, was already four rooftops down the road. His run was lilting and peculiar. At least she thought it was him. She could only see a black shadow, mixing with the shadows cast by the clouds, scudding across the moon. Sophie set after him. The night had turned damp and the slate was slippery in unexpected places. Sophie didn't dare follow fast. She jogged, as quickly as she dared, across her own rooftop and across the next. Rooftop running was not like other running. Sophie tried to keep her head low and her back half down. A bottom cropping up over the balustrades and chimney pots would be impossible to explain. Her arms and fingers seemed longer than usual and actually got in the way. Sophie halted, panting. The wind... Oh, sorry, that's Coco. The wind blew harder and she gripped a chimney pot. Clocks below her began to strike four and Paris was waking. Its sound was like the hum of a hundred secrets, she thought. It was the mutter of a dozen soothsayers. But the boy was nowhere to be seen. The boy had vanished. Oh, wow, how exciting. I mean, I don't know how I'd feel if I woke up to find somebody strange stood at the end of my bed. I don't know, would I have reacted like Sophie? I don't know. And to be quite honest, Hazel, I hope I never have to find out. I really don't. But they were very suspicious of each other, weren't they? Quite naturally, I would think. Um, she's sort of gauged that he's about her age. He's very, he's so intent, isn't he? These are my rooftops. You can't come on them. He hasn't given any explanation as to why, only to hint at everything that she might do on a rooftop would give him, he made a slight slip, didn't he? He said, you would give us away, and then he quickly changed it to me. So that's the intimation there that it's not only him that lives on the rooftops. I'm not sure that Sophie picked up on that, but she has followed him, hasn't she, out onto the other rooftops. So we'll have to wait and see where that leads us. And Charles is completely unaware of any of this going on. I wonder what Charles would be like, because throughout Sophie's life, anything that she's said that she wants to do or try or look into or believe in, he has never put her down for that, has he? He's always sort of bolstered her up on that and believed that everybody's own thoughts and beliefs are important, which I agree with too. But is he going to feel the same about her gallivanting? over rooftops of houses in the middle of the night with a strange boy. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see to find out. So that's the end of chapter 12. I'm going to record the next chapter. It's going to be 13 and 14. I had a quick look. They are quite short, so I will put them both together. So you're halfway through your week, Hazel. Hope you're having a great one. I'm sure you are. And I will say bye for now and catch up with you again tomorrow. Okay then, take care. Bye. Bye-bye.